So this video will show you how to actually use Entity Java Beans and their facades with Wicked quite easily. Now we're going to continue based off of a other tutorial which actually shows you how to make a facade and Entity Bean imported from SQL. But you can really use any facade in Entity Bean. The first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to download some libraries like cglib node p 2.2.jar. You can get the source and docs if you'd like. I will include the URLs in the description. Of course, you might want to Google a little bit, but these jars that I'm showing you will work, of course. So you just click this one. Of course, you're also going to need Wicked IOC, Wicked Inversion of Control. And I tried quite a few of these, and it seems that 1.4.5 seems to work. If you have any success with the other versions, please leave a comment. And of course, then you're going to have to go to Wicked Stuff and get Wicked Contribute Java EE. Dash 1.1.jar. Of course, once again, you can get the sources in Javadoc, which are usually quite helpful if you ever get an error. So just download all of those. And I've already done that, of course. So you could open up NetBeans and just go to your war file and open up your libraries, add jar or folder, and of course, cglib, the wicked contribute, and your wicked IOC. As you can see, I've tried a couple others here. But these three work, so 1.4.5 in your Wicked IOC. Now, what you're going to have to actually do next is you're going to have to open your Wicked application. And you're going to have to add this code. Now, this will take over the initializer for the web application. Of course, you'll call the original by calling super.init. But you have to add a component instantiation listener, which every time when you make a page or whatever it might be, you add a listener and it will actually just add a simple Java E component injector which, you know, takes over pretty much the regular instantiation listener in the sense that it only adds a small amount of code. So we're just going to fix imports, right click and fix imports or hit shift control I like I just did. Now save. Now your Wicked application is ready for some EJBs. So let's open up our home page code. And over here we have a simple hello world. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do private user facade local user facade. And now we have an EJB, of course. Right click, fix imports, or shift control I. Now, of course, we may want to inject this. So we're going to have to add an annotation at EJB. And we're going to have to say the name is equal to user facade because that's the name of the actual class, not just the interface. We're going to have to shift control I, fix imports. And there you go. Your user facade is now able to be accessed. So user facade dot find all dot get zero. And now we're going to make a user user and shift control I, of course. Now, of course, this assumes that there is something to get. You should make sure your database has stuff before you just willy-nilly use it, but I'm quite sure. So we're just going to do user.getName, and of course, we can do email as well. Not a big deal. So now we're just going to save that. And there you go. That's all it takes to actually use EJBs. Well, almost. So now the next thing that you're going to have to do is, of course, you're going to have to, well, I guess clean and build everything that you have going. Make sure that you have a successful build and then run your application. And so the general idea is that we'll have a startup message of hello, a username, and an email. Of course, I've already double checked and input it into my my SQL, an ID of one, a name of program Java, and an email of program at java.com. So that's what we should see come up. Now, of course, here's Safari. Ooh, and we get an error. Now, this I actually expected, don't worry. Now, this is because there's a class path that's not set. And so since I'm using MySQL, and not, for instance, Derby, I actually have to add the driver for the server. So, for instance, let's say I just go over here and I go to localhost 4848 and I enter in the Glassfish administration console, I can actually double check what's going on. Now, one thing that you can actually do is you can go 
to MySQL and download this and I'll leave the URL I guess again and of course it's gonna ask you to log in you just click this link no thanks just take me to the URL and that's it and then you just download it once you have it downloaded you can go over here and go to properties and packaging add jar folder go to MySQL add that MySQL connector now of course that should work for you if it doesn't it doesn't work for me but that's because I have multiple glassfish instances and I think they're clashing so for instance it's put over here and that's not the right spot the right spot is of course your glassfish folder find your glassfish folder and in NetBeans it's very nicely put with your NetBeans folder of course so just follow that go to glassfish go to domains go to domain one go to lib go to ext and just paste that file right there and that will be your driver URL so now all we have to do is go back over here and just take a look and if we go to JDBC and go to JDBC resources you'll see the JNDI names we've made EJB test which is what we're using so we'll go to MySQL test pool and of course you can go to directly to the connection pool once you know what it is and we're gonna hit ping of course it doesn't work and even after we added the file it's not gonna work you actually have to go over here and stop your glassfish server and once it's stopped you're gonna have to restart it all over again let's just do a clean build just in case and we'll run it again it only took two seconds to actually clean and build so why not so now that's going to be a little bit of a hassle and of course there's actually a lot of these <laughs> it took me a couple of hours to get this up and running again when you you have to remember all the little secrets and tricks and of course uh, one of the use most useful things is Google so now we're just going to reload this Safari page and there we go working beautifully hello program Java and the emails program at java.com and of course if you really want you can reload this glassfish console and you'll see that the ping this time will actually work so that's all it takes to actually read an entity Java bean in Wicket. It's actually really simple and especially when you know all the little tricks and you get all the right libraries and that's why I might suggest trying to use Maven if you know how to and that'll get you all the right resources hopefully. That's a little bit out of the scope of this uh, tutorial though. but I'm sure there are many that you can see on the subject. Alright well thank you for watching and if you have any comments or you know critiques anything you know, that you got to work or couldn't get to work, just leave an email. And as you can see, I mean, leave a comment, and as you can see, ping succeeded. So now it's actually working, and of course, our homepage is working as well. Thank you for watching.